previously we saw that we could connect resistances in series as well as in parallel and then we went on to find out what would be the equivalent resistance in case we connected two or more resistances in series and similarly what would be the equivalent resistance in case the same resistors are connected in parallel today we will discuss what would happen if we connect cells or batteries in series or parallel so let's take the first case connecting two cells in series so let's connect two cells with electromotive force epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 in series so let's consider a point A and I connect the first cell with a positive terminal towards A the negative terminal pointing towards a point B and let's assume that it has a electromotive force epsilon 1 and let its internal resistance be R1 suppose I connect this cell with yet another cell such that the positive terminal is again connected to point B and the negative terminal is connected to a further point C and let's assume that this cell has electromotive force epsilon 2 with the internal resistance R2 so they are said to be connected in series for two reasons one two of their end terminals are free while one of their terminals each is engaged and two in this case specifically in this case the negative terminal of the first cell is connected to the positive terminal of the second cell now we know from our previous discussions that voltage between points A and B here the basic assumption is that electricity comes out of the positive terminal and re-enters the battery through the negative terminal so with that in mind the potential difference between points A and B is given by the relation epsilon 1 minus the current I multiplied by resistance R1 so it's the electromotive force minus the voltage due to the internal resistance similarly V B C which is the voltage difference between points B and C will be given by epsilon 2 minus I R 2 now the total potential difference between points A and C is the sum of the potential differences between A and B and B and C so therefore the total potential difference V A C between points A and C is the sum of the potential differences between A and B and B and C so I substitute the values for these two from these two equations so what I get is epsilon 1 minus I R 1 plus epsilon 2 minus I R 2 so with the little bit of rearrangement what I get is epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus
minus i r one minus i r two. If I further simplify this, I end up with B A C equal to epsilon one plus epsilon two minus I, which is common, R one plus R two. So what does this tell me? This equation, if you observe it closely, is very similar to the general equation for the voltage difference between the two terminals of a cell. The general equation is B equals epsilon minus I R. So now, epsilon one plus epsilon two, I can replace it with epsilon equivalent. Electromotive force minus I, the sum of the internal resistances, which I call it as R equivalent. So V A C is equal to epsilon equivalent minus I into R equivalent, which means this entire circuit I can replace it with another. Single cell between the points A and C, such that it has a electromotive force epsilon E Q and a internal resistance R E Q, where epsilon E Q equals epsilon one plus epsilon two and R E Q equals R one plus R two. Now let's, for a moment, consider that I reverse the polarity of this particular cell. So what I do is I connect the negative to the negative and the positive facing C. Then what do you think happens? V A B remains the same, whereas V B C now has A negative sign associated with the electromotive force. So one assumption that I am definitely making here is epsilon one is greater than epsilon two. So the second equation now has a negative sign electromotive force. So obviously the sign will change here too. So this will become minus epsilon two and This sign too will change. So V A C will now become epsilon one minus epsilon two minus I R one plus I two. So eventually, we replace the cell, the two cells connected in series in the second case with a single cell where epsilon equivalent is equal to epsilon one minus epsilon two. And R equivalent is still the sum of the two resistances, internal resistances. Now let's consider two cells connected in parallel. So we start off with the simplistic case, wherein we have one cell with electromotive force epsilon one and internal resistance R one. Connected in parallel with another cell, electromotive force epsilon two and internal resistance R two, such that the positive terminals of both the cells are towards point A, a common point A, because both the leads come and join before they meet commonly at point A. Similarly, the negative terminals. They terminate at point B. So, by convention, there is electricity flowing out through the positive terminal and into the negative terminal of the cell. Now, one thing to note here is that the two cells are connected in parallel, which means 
there is a separate current that is flowing in this path and a separate current flowing in this path I1 and I2 respectively and the second point that we need to consider here is that since they are connected in parallel the potential difference between points A and B is the same potential difference across this cell and across this cell so keeping these two facts in mind let's proceed to find out what would be the equivalent electromotive force and internal resistance of two cells connected in parallel so similarly just like as previously we start by considering the first cell so we find voltage across it to be equal to epsilon 1 minus I1 R1 similarly for the second cell again potential difference I can call it as cell 1 cell 2 but remember the potential difference between both the cells is the same so it's both equal to V eventually is epsilon 2 minus I2 R2 now when two cells are connected in parallel or two resistances for that matter are connected in parallel I1 and I2 together meet to form the common current I I can further simplify these two equations so that I get current on the left hand side and write them as I1 equal to epsilon 1 minus V1 by R1 similarly I2 will be equal to epsilon 2 minus V2 by R2 now this other thing that we need to note as mentioned previously is the total current flowing in the circuit is the summation of the individual currents which means I can write the total current to be equal to I1 plus I2 so substituting for the values of I I1 and I2 from these two equations I get epsilon 1 minus V1 by R1 plus epsilon 2 minus V2 by R2 but remember V1 and V2 are both equal to V so I will also split the terms it becomes epsilon 1 by R1 minus V by R1 plus epsilon 2 by R2 minus V2 becomes V by R2 so grouping together similar terms I get epsilon 1 by R1 plus epsilon 2 by R2 minus keeping the negative sign outside the bracket I get V by R1 plus V by R2 continuing further I take the V common out of the bracket and now I again rearrange the left hand side and right hand side so that I get my V to the left hand side so 
To do that, let me first simplify this. I get epsilon 1 R2 taking the LCM. Epsilon 2 R1 by R1 R2 minus V R2 plus R1 by R1 R2. Further, I bring this particular term to the left hand side, I get R1 plus R2 by R1 R2 equals epsilon 1 R2 plus epsilon 2 R1 by R1 R2. I further again take LCM over here. What I am left with is plus V R1 plus R2 divided by R1 R2 equals epsilon 1 R2 plus epsilon 2 R1 by R1 R2. So the R1 R2 in the denominators. Suppose the cancellation of the denominator terms, I take the leftmost term to the right hand side so that I am retained with only voltage on the left hand side and I end up with this kind of equation. So if I further simplify this, then I get epsilon 1 R2 plus epsilon 2 R1 by R1 plus R2 minus I R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. So now this is in the form V equals epsilon equivalent minus I R equivalent which means epsilon equivalent is this entire term and R equivalent is the, this term. So what do you notice? We can further simplify this in this manner. Epsilon equivalent by R equivalent, if I were to divide these two, then I get, I can simply write this first term as Epsilon 1 by R1 plus Epsilon 2 by R2 and R equivalent If you notice R equivalent is R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 which is yet another way of writing parallel resistances. 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. Isn't this the same as connecting two resistances? in parallel. So these two equations clearly show what would be the equivalent resistance and the equivalent electromotive force when two cells are connected in parallel. So taking this discussion further, suppose I invert this cell, I flip this cell such that the negative terminal is on this side and the positive terminal is facing point B. The only change that will happen then is epsilon 2 will come with a negative sign. So wherever epsilon 2 is present, you will take epsilon 2 with a negative sign. Again, the assumption being epsilon 1 is greater than epsilon 2, just like how we did it when the case of cells being connected in series. 
So overall, if you look at both the scenarios, we can clearly see that for cells that are connected in series, for n cells connected in series, the equivalent electromotive force will be the sum of the individual electromotive forces taken with the sign and the sum, the net equivalent internal resistance will be the sum of the internal resistances of the individual cells. And when it comes to cells connected in parallel, the net equivalent electromotive force is given by a simpler equation wherein we consider the ratio of the equivalent electromotive force over the equivalent electromotive equivalent internal resistance and you have the ratios of the individual electromotive forces and the internal resistances the sum of these ratios up to n times for n cells gives you the ratio of equivalent electromotive force over equivalent resistance and equivalent resistance is given by the same equation that holds true for resistances connected in parallel.